In this demonstration, we'll take a look at some uh, interactivity in a dashboard style of report. We have reporting services integrated with SharePoint. In this library, I have some sample reports. One is a dashboard style of report that I will edit with Report Builder. The dashboard report contains a number of report items and data regions. We're just going to concentrate on this table right now. I'll zoom into that. So this is a, a business scorecard style of report that has uh, two levels of grouping, fiscal year and month, and then for each we have the gross profit margin, a KPI status, and a KPI trend. That data is derived from an analysis services data set that I'll edit. One of the nice things about using analysis services cubes and tabular models is that the query design is very simple. It's a simple graphical interface. Here's the data. As you can see, I'm grouping by fiscal year, and then by month, and by product category. Here I have KPIs. The KPI that I'm uh, most in interested in for this scorecard is this product gross profit margin. KPIs have four elements, a value, goal, status, and trend. Those values are simply derived from measures or calculations. We'll take a look at the values right here. There's the value element, there's the goal element, this is the status, and that's the trend. The business logic behind those values is not so important. That's part of the cube design. I simply treat them as fields here. Let's run the report so we can see what it looks like right now. Again, only concerned about that scorecard on the left side of the report. Let's go ahead and add a few fiscal years so you'll see values uh, grouped by fiscal year and then by month. I have a row for the fiscal year with a status and a trend and then for each month. All valuable information. It's a little busy and there's a lot of details there that uh, may not be appropriate for a dashboard in the first view. So we want to collapse that to the ear and then let the user drill down to details. In production this could be done at several levels, but we're keeping things nice and simple here for this demonstration. So I want to hide the month group. We'll go down to the row groups, to group properties, and visibility. And I'm going to say I want to hide this group by default and then I want to toggle it based on a toggle item, which is actually the name of this fiscal year text box right here. I also want to hide the uh, month value itself so I don't see the, the, the first month when it's collapsed. So we'll just go to the text box properties and do the same thing with the visibility. Hide that and toggle that on the same text box, the fiscal year, which is this text box right here. Let's go ahead and run that. Now we see, and again, we'll go ahead and show multiple years. And so in the default view of the dashboard, the user will see these values rolled up by the fiscal years, which provides a good high level view of business information with the value, the status and trend for the year for 2006, 07, and 08 and then the user can simply click on the plus sign, a familiar metaphor for users, and uh, there we see the breakdown by month. So that's a drill down action. Very intuitive, very easy to use. The next action is going to be a drill through, and this is actually kind of a modified version of a drill through. Usually when we think about a drill through, we think of a report navigating to another report, passing parameters, and and allowing the user to view the context of whatever they clicked on. What I would like to do is uh, when the user clicks on a category or on a trend line, I would actually like to show them the same visual that they can see in this spark line, which is the 
uh, sales amount monthly trend as the uh, column label uh, suggests. Um, but the user really can't see what these values represent. It's great that we have spark lines that provide a good high level view so they can see that the values are trending, but it would be good to see what these values are and uh, exactly what it is that we're visualizing for the selected calendar year and category that they click on. So over to the right, I have a chart and if you'll take a look at the data set that this chart is based on, it uses two parameters to filter the data behind the chart called the chart calendar year and the chart category. By default, those parameters have null values, which means that uh, no data is returned to the chart by default unless those parameters are set. So if we take a look at the data set itself, you can see that uh, the chart calendar year parameter is sent to, uh, to that data set. And then the chart category parameter is also sent to that data set, which then would return only values for the selected calendar year and the selected category. Now we want to click on this text box to uh, send those parameter values back to the same report. So we right click on the text box, go to action, and I want to go to a report and I actually want to go to this report. So I'm going to use the expression builder to built-in fields and then I'm going to just get the report name so that uh, it just gets the name of the same report. Now I add two parameters that I'm going to pass to uh, that report and those are going to be the chart category and the chart calendar year and then I'm going to select the calendar year that the user clicked on oops category that the user clicked on and the calendar year that the user clicked on alright so we see the table here with the spark lines uh, I would like to see the details for this spark line, which is calendar year 07 in bikes, I click on bikes and that actually reruns the same report. And as you can see, this chart with all of the details uh, is actually the same data behind that spark line.